All right, so in six, we got introduced to vectors. There's a lot of like stuff in here, right? The, the component form, the magnitude, and then the application of what you can do by adding, subtracting, and multiplying by a scalar. And then we talked about, God bless you, how to find a vector in the same direction, if it's a unit vector, and if it's not, how to graph these, how to graph the sum of them, right? And then we finish with a little bit of application of um, the vectors. So A and B for number one, component form and magnitude, the component form, remember you do, I'm gonna say this is the initial point and this is the terminal point. You will be given it on your test, like which one is which. So if the second one's the terminal point, I would do negative eight minus one and I get negative nine and then negative nine minus three and I get negative 12. So that's the component form for, for number one. B is magnitude, right? So if I didn't have the component form already, I can do the distance formula, but I already have the component form, so I can use the a squared plus b squared shortcut. So I get negative nine squared plus negative 12 squared, which is the square root of 81 plus 144, square root of 225, which actually simplifies to 15, a whole number. With me so far. All right, then number two says, using u is negative three, five, or negative five, three, sorry, and v is two, negative one. Find 2u plus b. So the first thing I'm gonna do is 2u. I'm gonna take two and multiply it in on u. And I get negative 10 and six. And then I'm gonna add that to v to negative one. I add the first from each, negative 10 and two is negative eight. Add the second from each, six and negative one, which is five. That's two. Still good. Okay, then I go to three, so five u minus three v. So now I'm doing five <coughs> times u minus three times v. And I get negative 25, 15. Now I have two choices, either multiply the negative three in on both and change it to addition, or keep it as a minus and distribute the three in. Either way, it doesn't matter, just be careful. When you do so, don't do both. So, and then I do subtraction. So negative 25 minus six is negative 31 and 15 minus the negative three becomes 15 plus three or 18. Questions on that one? Raise your hand if you're three for three so far. Okay, good. All right, then four said if u is negative three i plus four j, v is, neg is two i minus j, find two u minus, th minus v. So it's the same kind of problem, except that now it's in linear format. My advice is keep it in linear format because your answer is going to have to be put back in that anyways. So I'm going to do 2 times u minus v. So I get negative 6i plus 8j minus 2i plus j. So I would say most common mistake there is not changing the signs of both of these. Be careful there. And I get from this negative 8i plus 9j. And again, question given in ij needs to be answered in ij. Question given in component form needs to be answered in component form. Number five says find a vector in the same direction as number one with a magnitude of three. So a vector in the same direction means I would do the component form of whatever that vector is over the magnitude of that vector. If it was a unit vector, then you would not have been given another magnitude. Whatever you get from that's your answer. If it's giving you not a unit vector, so notice there's no word there unit, but it's giving you a magnitude, then at the end, I'm gonna multiply that magnitude times whatever's there. So if you go back and you look at number one, our unit, I mean our uh, component form was negative nine, negative 12, and our magnitude was 15. So I'm gonna do three times that. I'm gonna separate it out and simplify it. So I'd end up with three times negative nine over 15 and negative 12 over 15, which becomes three times, God bless you, negative three fifths and negative four fifths. So if it had just said unit vector, this would have been the end of it. But because it says with a magnitude of three, we're changing the length of what we just found. So I'd get negative nine, fifths and negative 12 fifths. So it's in the same direction as our initial one. If we had drawn it, the slopes should appear the same. They should be parallel, okay? But it's gonna be, the, the magnitude is not necessarily the same. 
Questions on that one? Okay, then number six says use the figure to graph 2u plus v. So I'm going to look at this, right? How do I find 2u? I'm going to double the length of u, right? So u is here. I'm going to take and double that so that it appears to be like about there. It doesn't have to be perfect, okay? I'm not going to I'm not going to give you a ruler and make you measure it, okay? But if you could picture it to be double, it'd be about there. And then remember to add these two together. The easiest thing to do is draw your it's almost like a parallelogram you're forming from the ter the um, terminal point of each of these i'm going to extend a line that is parallel to the other one so from you i'm going to extend out a, extend out a line that is parallel to v and then i'm going to rotate my paper or my ipad and i'm going to do the same thing to v i'm going to extend out a segment that's from the terminal point of v and then where these two meet, where they meet is the terminal point of their sum. So that red vector would be the sum of two u and v. If it was negative, remember we would change the direction and then do it. So like if it said negative v, I would point v in the other direction and then connect them. Questions on any of the warm-up? Because find the component form of V given its magnitude and the angle it makes with the positive axis. So remember we talked about if you're given magnitude and um, the angle, then you would find... Oh, wait, this is actually in the direction. You would find the component form by doing the magnitude times the cosine of the angle and then the magnitude times the sine of the angle, right? This time, you have to figure out, so if this direction is 8, eight 6, right, this is actually giving you the direction of the component form 8, 6, and you want to change the magnitude to 2. So this is actually like the warm-up question. Find a vector in the direction of this, but then change its magnitude. So vector in the direction of that would be that over the, magnit the magnitude of that, right? So the square root of 8 squared plus 6 squared. So 8, 6 over, that's 64, 36, square root of 100, which is 10. And then break it apart. So it's 8 tenths, 6 tenths. And then that actually can get reduced, right? That would be 4 fifths, 3 fifths. That would be a unit vector in that direction. But what it's asking you to find is 1 with a magnitude of 2. So then I'm going to take the 2 and multiply it into both. And I get 8 fifths and six fifths. And then when you go to actually graph it, you're just graphing that. So eight fifths would be one and three fifths, and six fifths would be one and one fifth. So I'm gonna go one, two, one, two. I'm gonna start at zero, zero. I'm gonna go to the right, one and three fifths. I'm gonna go up, one and one fifth, and then connect them and draw your arrow. So a little bit trickier because the word's different, but the process is the same. If you want to find a vector in the direction, so when you look for the words in the direction of, that's when you're doing the whatever the component form is over the magnitude of that and then simplify it. And then if it says unit, you don't change it. But if it said, here's magnitude, then you're going to change it to be whatever length it is. Okay, so almost the same thing because it says find the vector V with the given magnitude and the same direction as U. So the direction is where you get your initial component form from, and then the magnitude is going to get multiplied by it. So I'm going to take that 4, that would be 4, negative 5, when you take it out of the IJ format, right? Over the square root of 4 squared plus negative 5 squared, and I get 4, negative 5, over, this is 16 plus 25, it's the square root of 41, so then I'm going to split them up, and I get 4 over root 41, negative 5 over root 41. That would be the unit vector, and I could have rationalized it, like multiply both the top and the bottom by 41. But what it says is change it so it has a magnitude of 12. So then I'm going to take the 12, and I'm going to multiply it in. So it would be 48 over root 41, and then negative 60 over root 41. And then that, like you could have left it like that for y the sign. For your test, I want you to rationalize it. So it would be 48 root 41 over 41. 
and then negative 60 root 41 over 41. So look for the word same direction, right? Same direction means if it's a unit vector, I'm doing the component form over the magnitude. If it's a vector with a different magnitude, then I'm doing the component form over the magnitude and then multiplying my magnitude in. Questions other than those? Okay, so this is graph the vectors and the resultant vectors. So the initial um, vector, right, is what we need to find the component form of these vectors given the magnitude and the angle. And then the resultant vectors means add these two together and do the same thing. Find the actual component form and the angle formed. So I'm going to take these two separately. So the one over here has 300 and 135 as its angle and find the component form first. So let's say this is U and this is V. So U, remember, component form is the magnitude times the cosine of the angle, comma, the magnitude times the sine of the angle. Now, 135 is on your unit circle. They won't always be on your unit circle. So I'm actually going to, did this say to round? It didn't, right? Yeah, but like, because like, yeah. That's when you're. So that was the the video was different, right? The video. Six four is a continuation of vectors. This time we're going to talk about something called the dot product of a vector, and then a couple applications of the dot product. So we can't multiply two vectors together. Technically, there's two numbers, right? So you're not like multiplying them together. The form of multiplication in vectors is called the dot product. And it's done by multiplying the first terms in each, multiplying the sec second terms in each, and then adding them together. So when you multiply two vectors, your result is actually a single number. Not component form. So first times first plus second times second. And the biggest mistake people make is to leave it like that as its component. They multiply the first times the first, they put that number. They multiply the second times the second, they put that number, and then they leave it. The last thing you have to do with dot products is add those two together. So example one just says find the dot product of u and v. Okay, It will either be written like that or it will be written like this, and it means the same thing. So the little dot that means multiplication for everything else for vectors means dot product. So for A, I would do, oh, your, is it this one? That's, no, it's not this one. This one. 6 times negative 2 plus 1 times 3, negative 12 plus 3, which is negative 9. So the math of this is super easy. Everybody, everybody in here can multiply and add. You just got to remember what you're doing. For B, it says U is 3I and plus 4J. So 3i plus 4j and negative 2i minus 3j. Because the answer in this case is not formatted differently for an ij or for a component form, it probably is easier to just pull it out this time. So this would be 3, 4, and this would be negative 2, negative 3. So I would do first times first, which is negative 6, plus second times second, which is negative 12, and I'd end up with negative 18. questions on either of those. Easy stuff, right? You just got to remember what to do with it. All right, so this is all the stuff you can do with dot products, okay? Properties of dot products. The order does not matter. So u dot v is the same thing as v dot u because you'd be finding the sum and adding them together either way. Or finding the product, sorry, and adding them together. Number two, notice it is u dot v plus w. So it's like combining multiplication with addition inside the parentheses. You can either do what's inside the parentheses first and then multiply it times u, or you can distribute the u in to both the v and the w. So the distributive property works with the dot product. The magnet, oh, sorry, the, the dot product of any vector and itself is the square of the magnitude. So if it said to find u dot u and you already had the magnitude, all you have to do is square it.
And then the last thing says C times U dot V can be distributed to just a single of those terms. So this would be like if it said 2X times Y. Would you distribute that 2 into both the X and the Y? No, right? That is 2 times X times Y or X times 2 times Y or Y times 2 times X, right? It's all, you can move those, that order around, okay? It's, it's, it's commutative, I can move around multiplication, but I'm not gonna distribute it in. So notice the difference between this one and this one. In the first one, you've got addition, that would get distributed to both. In the last one, you've got multiplication, okay, or dot product, so it would only get distributed to one. How does it do you dot C? So you can, because it's technically, so the C is a number, right? C, we're saying C is a scalar. So if it was 2u dot v, then I can rearrange, that's all multiplication, it carries the same weight. I can rearrange that in any order I want. I could do 2 times u and then multiply it times v, or I can do u times 2 times v, or I can do u times v and then multiply it times 2. The order itself doesn't matter. What do you mean by uh, Like a number. So a real number, positive, negative, doesn't matter, but a real number, which is perfect because that comes back into this. Good question. Uh, one, change your U, right? Your U says like two, two. It got super confusing when it was the same number. So change U. U should be negative five, six. This says use U being negative five, six, V negative three, four, and W one negative two to find the indicated quantity and then state whether the result is a vector or a scalar. So the first one says u dot u, and we now know two ways to do this. You've got options. You can either do the dot product of u and u. So I can do negative five, six times negative five, six. So first times first is 25, plus second times second is 36. Add those together, I get 61. The other option is if you look back on the slide before this, it said that the dot product of any vector and itself is equal to the square of its magnitude. So I can also find the magnitude of u by doing the square root of negative five squared plus six squared. I'd get the square root of 25 plus 36, square root of 61, and then square it, and I get 61. So your choice, I don't care which way you do it, know that you can do both ways, especially to check it. Sometimes it's just easier to stick to the dot product if you don't remember what to do with the less of it, but it doesn't matter which one you do. Questions on that one? Okay, and then B says three W times V all right, so again, this is all multiplication, right? There's no plus sign there. So it's three times V times W times V times U, which means the order doesn't matter. You could do this in any order that you want. You just can't multiply the three times more than one thing or the V, it's only one times one times one. So what does your gut tell you to do first? Which one? There's no wrong answer here. Three W, I would say most people would do three W, would you agree? Okay, there's nothing wrong if you don't, but that would probably be the first thing that I would do. So three times W means three negative six. That's gonna get multiplied by V and then by U. So three negative six times V, which is negative three, four. I would do the dot product. So first times first, negative nine plus second times second negative 24 and I get negative 33 and then the last thing I'm going to do is multiply that times u so negative 33 times negative 5 6 and I get 165 and negative 198 and again you could have checked it by doing it other ways no matter which way you do that, which order you do that, you should have gotten the same answer. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
Yours is different. Yeah. I just changed it from two to because it got confusing which two you were taking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now the second part of this question says state whether the result is a vector or a scalar. How would I know the difference between a vector or a scalar? What's a vector look like? What's a scalar look like? Why? Okay, and then a scalar would be what? A single number, yeah? So a scalar is a single number, a vector is in component form. So is A a scalar or a vector? Scalar. Is B a scalar or a vector? Vector. Does everybody understand that? Scalar, single number, vector, component form. Or in linear form, like it could be IJ, it's still a scalar. I mean, it's still a vector, sorry. Just the single number is your scalar. Single number could be positive, could be negative, could be fraction. As long as it's a real number, it's a scalar. Okay, so because you can use the magnitude to find the dot product of something times itself, right? We said V dot V or V times V would be the square of the magnitude. You can rearrange that, and if you're given the dot product, you can find the magnitude. So now we're going to work backwards. We're going to say that the magnitude of a vector is equal to the square root of the dot product of that vector and itself. So square root of vector times vector, but those have to be the same thing, right? So this one says use the dot product to find the magnitude of u. So to find the magnitude of u, we just said magnitude of u is equal to the square root of u dot u. So now we just have another way to find magnitude, okay? If I do it this way, the magnitude or the dot product of u and u would be 3 times 3 or 9 plus negative 4 times negative 4, which is 16, and that's 25. And then the magnitude of u would be the square root of 25, which is 5. So now you have two ways to find the magnitude because I could have also done what we did at the beginning, which is the square root of a squared plus b squared. Square root of 3 squared, which is 9, plus negative 4 squared, which is 16. Square root of 25, which is 5. The directions on the homework say use the dot product to find the magnitude, so practice this process. But when it comes time for the test and it just says find the magnitude, I don't care which way you use it. So unless it specifically says use the dot product, you can use either square root a squared plus b squared or the square of the uh, the square root of the dot product. Okay, so now look at b. U says three i. What is the component form of three i? Uh, this is the original way to do magnitude, right? It's the square root of a squared plus b squared. Yeah. So once we get that, we got to square root it. Is that what you mean? Like, or the first one? You get the same answer. Yep. So the magnitude of u can either be found by doing the square root of the dot product of u in itself or the square root of a squared plus b squared. So what's the component form of 3i? Yep, 3, 0. So then magnitude of u, we're going to practice it this way. Square root of u dot u. So 3 times 3, which is 9, plus 0 times 0, which is 0. Square root of 9, which is 3. And again, you'd get the same answer by doing a squared plus b squared underneath the square root. This is just another way to find magnitude. Questions on that one? Okay, and then angle between two vectors. So we're going to do one more type, one more topic, and then we'll stop for today. So let's say I have two vectors here and here, and I want to find the angle between these two vectors. Uh, if you drew them accurately, you could take out your protractor and you could measure them, but we saw how successful we all were at being accurate with protractors last week. Uh, mommy, not, maybe not the best way to find it, okay? The other way to find it is that the cosine of theta 
equals u dot u over, and this is magnitude, so this should be double lines, over the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. So the dot product of those two vectors over the product of their magnitudes, which means at the end I'm gonna end up doing theta equals cosine negative one of u, whatever I get from u dot v over the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. And this answer is going to be in degrees. So your calculator should stay in degrees this whole test. All right, so A and B, find the angle between the given vectors. I'll do the first one with you, and then you're gonna do B. So again, I would have said that the cosine of theta equals, this is U and V, so U dot V over the magnitude of U times the magnitude of V. So break it down into its parts. First, I'm gonna do U dot V. So first times first plus second times second, and I get three plus zero, which is three. So that's gonna be my numerator. Then I'm gonna find the magnitude of u. You can either use the dot pro, sorry? So the magnitude of u would be the square root of a squared plus b squared, square root of one, which is one. And then the magnitude of v square root of three squared plus negative two squared, square root of nine plus four, which is square root 13. So if the cosine of theta equals three divided by the square root of 13, let your calculator do the work for you. I would type it in as cosine negative one of three divided by square root 13. And I get 33 point, we're gonna round to nearest 10, 33.7 degrees. Now think about this logically. If I actually graph those two points, it's not gonna be 100% accurate, but we can get an estimate at least. One zero means I have a vector that looks like that. Three negative two means one, two, three, negative two means I have a vector that looks like this. And I'm saying that this angle should be 33.7 degrees. Does it look like it's approximately 33.7 degrees? Yes. Again, you're not gonna get 100% accurate, but if you ended up something getting like 80 degrees for your answer and then you go graph it and it looks like that, you know something's wrong. All right, so dot product of u and v, again, this time was one, total coincidence, not gonna happen every time. Okay, magnitude of u, square root 29, magnitude of v, square root 10. So when you go to type it into the calculator and you do the cosine negative one, it opens up your parentheses. You can do one and then divided by, and then the square root of 29 times 10 can either both go under the root 
or be separated out as square root 29 times square root 10. It doesn't matter, just be careful. If your answer was something like 10 outside your square root, make sure when you're typing that into your calculator that you're not putting the 10 underneath the root. So from here, you should get 86.6 degrees. And then again, you can test it out. So if I wanna do two, five, up, over two, up one, two, three, four, five, there's my first vector. And then the second one, three, negative one, over three, down one. And it looks like it's pretty close to 90 degrees, which makes sense with that 86.6. Questions? We good? Okay, so the homework covers up to that part, and then we'll finish the notes for, eight, for six, four tomorrow.